someday. In the not so distant future, it happens. The moment you realize you're ready for anything. Get a degree in emergency management from Jacksonville State University and be ready for where you're going. This is your Weather Extreme video for Sunday, February the 2nd, Groundhog's Day. Hope your groundhog doesn't see his shadow. I'm meteorologist Brian Peters. I understand uh, Puxatani Phil, one of the most famous fuzzy forecasters, did see his shadow this morning. That means six more weeks of winter, at least up there. But I doubt that Birmingham Bill will see his shadow. There's a look at the temperature trace from my weather station last night, and it's kind of interesting to note that the temperature was falling around 11 p.m., but by midnight or 1 or so, it began to level out, and then it actually has risen just a little bit, only a degree or two. Fog this morning, and we can see that fog on the Mount Chiha sky cam. We can see that down along the Appalachians and down in the valleys. We can also see it on the Tuscaloosa sky cam as we look out over the bridge uh, over the river there to north to Northport. Frontal system is in the area, and ahead of that front, we have a dense fog advisory over much of the southeastern U.S. In the upper atmosphere, the trough we've been watching is beginning to kick out of the southern Rockies, and we'll be moving across uh, the middle Mississippi River Valley or so over the next uh, 24 hours, causing a variety of problems. Cold air is streaming in once again uh, to the north, and that cold air will be diving a little to uh, our uh, west, but the cold air looks like it's going to stay, thanks to the upper air pattern, uh, a little bit to our north. Temperatures in central Alabama this morning are generally pretty warm, pretty mild for this time of year. A little cooler in the east central part of the state. We're there in the 40s, but in the 50s for much of the rest of the area. Radar showing uh, the rain out ahead of the front, plus some of the uh, winter weather precipitation back in Oklahoma. And uh, that winter precipitation is going to be affecting a band of area from about uh, Lubbock, West Texas area, across parts of southeastern Oklahoma, northern Arkansas, West Tennessee, Middle Tennessee, Kentucky, all the way up into southern Pennsylvania. For us, though, we're looking at some rain over the next five days, and that rain actually could be heavy at times. We're looking at the possibility of probably one and a half to three inches, maybe even a little bit more than that, uh, over the whole seven days. And the Storm Prediction Center is out looking uh, no uh, area of uh, actual severe storms. However, they are um, uh, forecasting um, a sea text area down there in Louisiana. We'll be talking about that. All right, let's get to the modeling. And this is the 06E GFS model run. We're going to be jumping back and forth here from some different charts. But there's the pattern for today as the front approaches us uh, from the uh, northwest. That trough uh, comes out of the Texas area quickly. You can see it uh, located over uh, Pennsylvania and West Virginia uh, by Monday afternoon, and therefore that means that uh, we should see rain tonight and into early Monday, but the rain should be ending first thing Monday morning and actually giving us a bit of a dry afternoon. We may even see a few peaks at the sun. Now let's talk about the possibility of uh, snow first or winter weather. The GFS is painting the area from uh, just to the east of Lubbock uh, all the way up to uh, southeastern Pennsylvania as the area for the greatest amount of accumulated snow potential, and that's the area along which you see most of those winter weather advisories. Now, relative to severe weather, uh, the Storm Prediction Center does have uh, sea text over southern Louisiana primarily and southern Mississippi, and that's because Cape values do actually come up and the moisture is uh, pretty rich and deep down there. But the Cape values still only come up into the uh, about the 400 or 500 range, so they're not especially severe or especially high, but that is sufficient for marginally severe storms. And as I mentioned, we're concerned about the possibility of heavy precipitation. And there's a look at precipitable water values, which precipitable water values are running on the order of uh, one and a half to one and three quarter inches over central Alabama. So that means we could see some potential for some flood issues. However, I think the good thing is that the ground is dry because we haven't had much rain for quite some time. So the ground is dry. However, we'll have to watch the flooding potential as it changes as we get these different weather systems because we've got one tonight and early tomorrow, and then we've got one on 
uh, Tuesday and into Wednesday, and then we've got another one uh, late Friday and into Saturday. So we'll have to watch because that rain will be piling up. All right, back to the models, and there's uh, the upper air pattern for Tuesday. The second trough is now coming out of the Southern Rockies and coming across the Texas Panhandle, and that will be uh, adding to our moisture as the cold front that goes through today actually lifts back on uh, mon late Monday and into Tuesday as a warm front. <clears throat> By Wednesday, uh, that system is now, that trough in the upper atmosphere is up over Pennsylvania and New York, so that takes the system with us. So we actually do dry out, but because of the upper air, uh, upper air flow, we're not expecting that cold air to actually just dig right in. Yes, we will cool off and get colder, uh, with highs maybe uh, down as low as about 48 or so, but it doesn't look like it's going to be extremely cold and the moisture is gone. We stay in a bit of a almost uh, west to southwest zonal flow on Thursday, and again on Friday we begin to see that next trough, the next uh, short wave coming out of the southwestern United States, and so moisture will be increasing ahead of that to our west. So I think for the most part, Friday will probably be dry. We may have to modify that depending on exactly how fast this system develops. That trough goes negatively tilted on Saturday, and as it does, we're going to see the development of a surface low in the vicinity of southern Louisiana. Now, where is that surface low Develops where that surface low develops is going to depend. Um, it's it's going to uh, you know affect exactly where severe weather possibilities are. Right now, I think the greatest severe weather threat with this kind of pattern is going to be to our south. But we'll have to watch because if that low is a little further back to the west and it comes out across uh, northern Mississippi instead of northern Alabama, we could have a more serious concern. Also, we're going to see the cold air diving in behind that system on Sunday, and so we uh, do need to be careful about the possibility of winter weather, especially to our west and northwest. However, as you see by the 540 thickness line there on Sunday, showing it diving down into central Alabama and precipitation occurring, we'll have to definitely be watching the possibility of uh, the precipitation changing over to some freezing rain and or snow before it um, completely ends. But we're also verging on voodoo country. So, you know, we can't be that specific right now. It's just a threat that we need to be watching. There's a lot of uncertainty when you get out that far. Looking way out into voodoo country, around Valentine's Day, heart throbs there, on the 14th of February, we see the pattern is almost a little bit zonal across our area, and uh, so uh, not especially cold, but that changes a little bit as the trough dives in. Now, yesterday we were showing the trough diving in, but more over the Ohio River Valley. This is more along the mid-Atlantic states and the East Coast. So this would mean cooler for us, but not especially cold. But this pattern also suggests a pretty substantial winter storm for the mid-Atlantic states. Again, we're out into voodoo country, so we'll have to watch. Well, that'll do it for the Weather Extreme video for this morning. James Spann will be back with the next edition first thing on Monday morning. In the meantime, stay tuned to the blog for updates on the weather as it develops. I'm meteorologist Brian Peters. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great day and Godspeed. Thank you for trusting us to be your number one source for news in all of central Alabama. In back-to-back -back ratings periods, more people watched ABC 3340 than any other station in Birmingham.